So today we're talking about pre-recorded videos in your live stream. This is an essential topic to understand the benefits, what you can do and what you cannot do. And I'll also give you a little tutorial on how to bring it in via Ecamm software, if that's a software you are using. So pre-recorded videos is the topic of today. Are you ready to get into it? I know I am. And if you are new around here, please do type new in the comments. If you are new, you don't know me. Hi, I'm Larry Petrucci, and I am from Live Streaming Pros, where I help you create professional live videos that are uniquely you. But this is the show that we do with Ecamm themselves in partnership with them because I love their software and it's a super beneficial software for you to use. We are live here every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific, helping you get more out of both Ecamm and your live productions in general. Welcome to the show. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> I dance while not on camera, by the way. <laughs> so today, obviously pre-recorded videos, that's the topic. I want you to understand what the benefits are of using a pre-recorded video in your live streams, but then we're also going to talk about the what you can do and what you cannot do, and I'll give you a little tutorial as well. So in terms of the benefits itself, why would you want to use a recorded video inside of your live stream? Well, you just saw a benefit right then when I pressed the intro button on my stream deck. Um, that is a little video that introduces you to the show. It's a consistent thing inside of this weekly show that we do for Go Live Now. That way you know you're in the right home, you're, you're in the right spot, uh, you kind of get to know it, you maybe jam out to it a little bit. It's a little intro, it doesn't take long, but it helps us identify the show and gives us a chance to get you in and comfortable and ready to rock and roll, right? So a benefit of live of recorded videos in live streams are things like that, intros and even outros. And if you are using an outro video, I'll actually show you here in a minute how you can go straight from an outro video to ending the broadcast so that you have a smooth transition out of your show. Um, but also, a benefit of uh, recorded videos is that you can tell stories, right? So let's say your, your topic of the day is mostly live, but you also have a beautiful testimonial from a customer, or you have a, uh, an, a video that you did in the kitchen where you're, you're cooking something and it took a while, so now it's edited down and it wouldn't be appropriate for live, but you still wanna integrate that into your content live. Or maybe you have uh, an out and about video that you recorded from a festival or an event, not that we have events these days, but you know, we'll get back there, uh, or anywhere out and about that you've pre-recorded, you've edited, and you really want to add to the content of your live stream, you can bring those into your production and it helps engage the audience. It helps add a little bit more TV quality production to the mix, right? Um, also ads. Now, if you are using a pre-recorded video for an ad, then we need to talk about some details. And as we go into the next couple of sections, which we talk about what you can do and what you cannot do, I will cover the do's and don'ts when it comes to ads specifically. But if you have a sponsorship um, that you are running and there's a, a recorded video that you've taken the time or the sponsor themselves has uh, given to you to play during the stream, that is also a big benefit to give it a bit of a break and actually you know, thank your sponsors for the day. Now, I'm a big fan of host endorsements versus pre-recorded ads, but again, we'll talk about that in detail here in a second. So let's talk about when you can play a pre-recorded video. Every time you can play pre-recorded videos pretty much any time you want. There are a few exceptions we'll get, which we'll get to. But um, any of the things that I just mentioned, those benefits, 
you can play those at any time during your live stream. Uh, so again, if you have intros, if you have segments that you want to bring in and add to the production value, or if you have an ad like, that, like, like I mentioned, that you wanna bring into. But when you cannot actually use pre-recorded videos twofold, one, ads. So uh, this does not affect YouTube. So if you're streaming on YouTube, this does not apply to you. If you are streaming on Facebook, this absolutely applies to you. So if you're streaming on Facebook, I want you to give me a big Facebook in the comments so that I know who's actually streaming on Facebook. Because if you have an ad, a pre-recorded ad video, sponsorship, advertisement of any kind, Facebook's terms of service for live streaming does not allow that in your production. So whether you're opening with an ad or whether it's in the middle of your content, that is a big, big no to Facebook. Again, YouTube doesn't matter. So we've got a ton of Facebook people who are streaming there, uh, simulcasting. So if you're simulcasting, you need to prioritize the Facebook terms of service over YouTube uh, just to make sure that you're not breaking terms of service with Facebook. Tons of you streaming on Facebook. So really want you to hear about this. Um, you cannot run ads on Facebook. Why? Well, Facebook has their own ad platform that they're, that they're implementing and integrating into live streams. So they don't want your ads butting up against their ads. They want to monetize your show. And so that's something to be very, very aware of. Now, what's the alternative if you are streaming on Facebook, but you also want to run an ad? The alternative is what I mentioned before, host endorsements. So that would be something like what we talk like, like this, Ecamm Live, I'm, is basically sponsoring this episode, right? These weekly shows, they are my partner in this, really. I, I call them a partner rather than a sponsor because it's a more integrated partnership rather than just a sponsorship. But I love Ecamm so much that I'm constantly talking about them even outside of the Go Live Now show. Because, and so so what I uh, what you need to hear out of that is that I'm, integrating that conversation into my content in an organic way. That is a host endorsement as opposed to an ad that's pre-recorded, right? So that's something that you need to think about and you can do so much with integrated host endorsements and organic sponsorships uh, that really speak well to your audience and don't feel like an ad. So because of, I'm always caring about the, the um, experience of the audience, it's so important to me for them to feel like it's a natural thing as opposed to well, now let's thank our sponsor for the day, right? So anytime we work with a sponsor of any kind, it's very organic and I try and integrate that into the content itself. So if you are uh, facing the issue of, you know, the, um, the ads, then try and just present it a little differently. Don't play an ad and don't agree contractually with a sponsor to play a pre-recorded video on Facebook. Um, now, the other thing, the second thing you cannot do in your live streams on Facebook or YouTube is act as if it's a live video when it's not. So a lot of people wanna do this. They wanna pre-record a video and then they wanna play it live to take advantage of the algorithm. And that's a big no-no not only because it breaks terms of service, but if you are acting as if a live stream is live when in fact it is not, meaning you are not there to engage and answer comments and answer questions, et cetera, et cetera, if you are not there, you are breaking trust dramatically with your audience. And there are some big marketers out there who will actually do this and it breaks my heart because as soon as I realized as a viewer that it wasn't live, guess what? I'm no longer tuning into their live streams because it's not live. So I'm not gonna get any benefit out of it 
watching it live versus pre-recorded when I can speed that that video up, right? Because <laughs> I always watch it, watch things at like two times speed. I don't know. Is anybody else do that? Um, but so they're they're you breaking trust with your audience and trust and live streaming go hand in hand. So do not, do not, do not, please do not <laughs> play a pre-recorded video in its entirety as if it were a live stream. So those are the reasons that you should, shouldn't, what you can, cannot do. Uh, right now I wanna actually do, <laughs> I like this, Stingray says, yes, two times speed all the way, love that feature. I use that all the time, helps me, oh yeah, at least one and a half, right? Some people talk too fast to go two times speed. I get that as well. Um, so here's a good, and I hear this a lot. My supply chain says, you can be there to respond to comments while a video is playing. If you are actually being transparent and being honest with the audience, then yes, you can do that. But the key thing is here, most people don't read all the fine print. Most people don't know that you're actually running a, a pre-recorded video, unless it says pre-recorded very clearly on the video. And that is okay with Facebook and YouTube's terms of service, if it's clearly stated. But um, you just can't pretend. So while there are some times maybe that that makes sense to run a pre-recorded video live, as long as you're super, 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 super clear about it, and you are in there engaging in the audience comments, there could be reasons to do so. However, I would play that very few, very little, right? Don't go to that solution often so that you're not, again, breaking that trust. Okay, so uh, let me go into demo mode here and just explain to you if you're using Ecamm, and by the way, if you are not using Ecamm already, you can get a free trial right here at livestreamingpros.com slash Ecamm, and you can get a free tutorial series about how to set up Ecamm and use it. But if you are using Ecamm or if you are thinking about it, here's how easy it is to bring in a pre-recorded video. Uh, and you guys are on, you guys are on stream chatting away. <laughs> and I am coming to questions here in just a bit. So when you have a video, then uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go randomly in here and I'm gonna create a new scene. So scenes is how, you know, Ecamm works, uh, where you can change back and forth between different assets, meaning a camera or a recorded video or a lower third or anything that you might want to show up on camera. Um, so uh, Paul is saying, don't forget a video like that, uh, an advertisement can't have sound. Um, clarify that for me, Paul, uh, what you mean by that uh, as of terms of service. So we're gonna create a new scene and then we're gonna name that scene, okay? Uh, we're gonna name it uh, video. Oops, and I can't type, there we go. So you can see that I just created a new scene. Now, of course, we need to change the camera on this to my camera, but that doesn't really matter because what we're really going to do is go into Finder and uh, I'm just gonna literally click and drag the intro video here. I'm actually gonna mute that movie file, um, but you see I dragged this video in here. You can also go into um, overlays and add a new, uh, a new uh, animated overlay and then it'll be a video. But what we wanna do is get rid of this. Unless you want your video in a pip style on top of your video, but most likely you So sorry, sorry. <laughs> I had audio. I don't know what happened there. Sorry. Um, okay. So um, when we had, it, basically what I was saying was it said uh, that there you were to do nothing when the video 
uh, ended, but you need to make sure that you have the go to next scene or if you want to loop the video, um, but you need to decide what happens when that video ends so that when now we have, uh, it will go to the next scene, but here's the kicker. Um, this next scene, if you notice, is not my main camera. It is actually a different camera. So if you're gonna have a video, then go into the next scene, what you need to do is make sure that that next scene is exactly what you want. In my case, it would be my main camera, okay? Uh, sorry, and then let me get there, okay? So then we have the camera as the next scene in the, the line here, right? So, oops, see, that, that needs to be right there. It needs to be right under the video. So that's how you can control your video. <laughs> how you get it in, it mutes it every time I play the video. That's why you guys weren't hearing it because Ecamm is smart and they don't want you to actually be talking during a video because most likely you don't want that. So that was my fault for not unmuting every time I played. Um, all right, so then it goes to the main scene and voila, we've got a great production flow there. Now, the other thing I wanna show you is that you can actually do this. You can end the broadcast right as the video ends. So as I mentioned earlier, if you're going to be doing a, an outro video, then that is a perfect option to then go to the outro video straight out to end the stream. Uh, so you can totally do that as a perfect option to kind of smooth outro out of your stream. That is it really for the demo. I mean, it's super, super, super simple, but I hope that this has been really um, helpful in terms of knowing what you can do with pre-recorded videos and what you cannot. Let me know what was your biggest takeaway from this training in the comments. Uh, remember, we are going to Q&A for the live viewers, but if you're watching the replay, join us for the Q&A, join us for the live stream so you can participate in this conversation every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific for Go Live Now, a partnership with Ecamm and Live Streaming Pros. So we're gonna head on into Q&A. Replay viewers, I'll see you next time.